Hey, man, what's up? We're here to find the Forge of Spells. Is this it? I see you've been keeping an eye on the place. You're doing a great job, by the way. How many eyes is that? Five? You're really putting in some overtime. Anyway, we're just going to have a look around, if that's cool with you. The creature blinks its many large eyes at you, Joe, and says, Affirmative. As per my contract, I'm here to safeguard the weapons in this workshop, allowing access for deposit of materials by miners and withdrawal of armaments by designated wizards. I am to inform you that you are late with your latest shipment of supplies to the forge by 532 years, 8 months, 3 days, 4 hours, and 37 seconds. The status of the forge is behind schedule. Please deposit materials in the designated area outlined in your introductory manual you received upon your employment. I want to lean towards Barack's ear and whisper, I think this alien-looking dude has lost his fucking marbles. Maybe we can use this to our advantage. I nod to Don and say to him in a whisper, well, go ahead. You're the best bullshitter between all of us. I straighten up my robes and walk forward to the eye dude and say, yes, we are here actually because we are training some of our new recruits. My name is Wizard Donald and this here is Wizard Barack. The mine had an unfortunate accident and stopped production for several centuries, but we have three new miners here. Joe, George, and Droop to begin processing materials. Uh, our first order of business is processing and removing the current supplies and armaments from the forge so it can uh, get cataloged at headquarters. Give me a deception check, Don. Wait, I want to help him with this. I want to say yes, it has been a long time coming for us, but we are eager to get back to work. I believe you'll be excited to fulfill your end of the contract as well. It has been some time. Once we get the forge operational, we will terminate your contract. All right, Don, give me a deception check with advantage with Barack's help. With advantage, I rolled a 15. Please tell me we get it. The eyes on the creature blink at you all, and the creature says, Very well, these terms are acceptable. Items may be removed from the forge for cataloging in an off-site location. Beings Donald, Barack, George, Joe, and Droop are authorized. Another thing, this is a tight-knit operation, and it is just us who are in charge of the forge. Unless we specify otherwise, all other creatures in the cave system are not authorized to be here and should be terminated on site. Affirmative. Now that we have iBoy's permission to be here, can I take a look around? What's in this room? Where's the loot, Ben? In the southeast corner of the room, you spot three items sitting on a workbench. There is a large mace with etchings of the human god, Lathander. They are a commonly worshipped human god that represents birth, renewal, spring, and youth. Just being near this thing gives a feeling of the divine as it radiates with holy energy. The head of the mace is shaped like a sunburst and made of solid brass. Another item on the table is a breastplate armor made for a medium-sized creature. This armor consists of a fitted metal chest piece worn with supple leather. Although it leaves the legs and arms relatively unprotected, this armor provides good protection for the wearer's vital organs while leaving the wearer relatively unencumbered. The armor has a design of a person wielding a sword standing before a towering dragon. The last item is a rod that is made from a coal black material that is about an inch thick and around two feet in length. Engraved along the shaft are infernal runes and dwarven etchings. Hey, uh, Guardian dude, can you tell us what these items are here? It will save us some time identifying them back at headquarters. The creature looks to you, Don, and says, Certainly. The mace is called the Lightbringer. Its metals are infused with magic, as anything forged here is. Its design is to the human god of Lathander. The commission of this piece was to be delivered to the same church, though the recipient is not specified. The wielder will have efficiency with dealing with undead creatures, as the holy energy will tear them asunder. That would have been helpful before getting here. The armor breastplate is called the Dragon Guard, created for a human hero of Neverwinter named Turgon, who had saved the city from a dragon attack. The etchings on the armor is to commemorate his bravery. Due to the delay in delivery, it is presumed this hero has expired. This armor will provide additional protection to the wearer and provide additional protections against breath-type attacks from creatures such as dragons. Oh man, that stinks. He won't be getting that armor. I may have to inspect it a bit more. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. The last is called the Rod of the Pact Keeper. The material used is a mixture of jet and obsidian and used to attune to the darker side of magic, primarily to connect and channel magic from a patron signed in an infernal pact. The item was commissioned by a tiefling male who had gone by the name of Thorn. However, upon delivery, payment was withheld. An altercation emerged and the commissioner was slain in the process. The item was returned here. Oh man, that's a shame. We may have to find another warlock who might need to deal a little extra damage. I wonder where we can find one of those. I want to take a look at this brazier that's burning with all that green fire. What's that all about, Ben? I don't know. Why don't you give me an arcana check and figure it out yourself? Whoa, all right, I rolled a 15. Does that get me anything? 
it does actually, and you just meet it, you can identify that this brazier is the main source that permanently binds magic to items, such as the ones you found here in this forge. However, it has been burning for some time. Most likely the entire time the mine has been abandoned. With dedicated research and time, this could be brought back to its prime and be able to permanently enchant items again. Right now though, bathing armor or weapons in this green flame for one minute will give it magical properties for roughly 12 hours. That's dope. What will it do to already magic items? Will it make them more magical or something? No, it won't change their properties. This forge is specifically for making the mundane into magical items. So who's getting this loot? It's time to replace this studded leather armor for this dope-ass Dragon Guard armor. I think the only other person who could use medium armor is Droop. Also, you're a rogue, Joe. I think you can only wear up to light armor. That is correct. Rogues without multiclassing can only wear light armor. So the only person who could wear this armor is Droop and George. Droops gets news armors. I try to put on the armor, but it's probably way too big for me. Yes, the armor is a little bit too big for him, primarily around his torso. The straps that hold the armor to him are a little too loose. Are there tools we can use to maybe tighten up the straps on, on the armor so he can wear it feasibly? Yes, in the workshop you find some tools to easily modify the armor for Droop so it fits snugly around him. It doesn't take much time at all. How does that feel, Droop? Any better? I do a little hop and see the armor fits nicely and give a big toothy grin. Well, I'm going to take this rod of the Pack Keeper since I'm the only warlock in the party. I spin the rod around like a baton in a flourish. I'm going to take the Lightbringer. I'm still going to use Talon, but I'll switch to this mace if we run into any more undead. With new magic items in hand or on your person, you all have successfully collected the magic items within the Forge of Spells. The creature guarding the place doesn't seem to mind you all absolutely looting the place now that it has given you all permission. With the Forge of Spells explored, what would you all like to do next? Hold up there, Buckaroo. This big old green flame thing. You said we could put some of our mundane armor and weapons in the fire. We can get some bonuses, right? Since Don passed your skill check, what does that exactly mean? Yes, if you all bathe your mundane armor in the fire for one minute, it will have plus one AC for the next 12 hours. Weapons are the same, but a plus one to attack and damage bonuses. We, we might as well all take advantage of that brazier while we're here. It'll take some time for me to get out of my armor, bathe it in the flame, and put it back on, it'll go a lot quicker with everyone's help. Just so I know, who all wants to put their equipment in the flame other than George's armor? I put my leather armor in the brazier, but my armor of shadows is already going to be better than what it can provide. I think I'll be good for the time being. I wants to put in my scimitars, I will most likely just uses my bows, but it's better to have its and not needs it than to needs it and not have its. Yeah, I'm gonna put my short bow in the flame for the same reason Droop is doing his scimitar. I'm also going to put my studded leather armor in there to get that sweet-ass extra point of AC. Going to squat up my armor, baby. Nothing for me. I don't need weapons and armor like the rest of you scrubs. I am the danger. I am the weapon. I am a fucking god, and I don't need all this extra shit. Oh, so I guess you don't need that staff of defense, periapt of wound closure, and stone of good luck, then? Hey, don't put words in my mouth. I'm saying I don't need tools like you lesser beings. I have ascended beyond that. Only the finest silks and most magical items shall touch my skin, thank you very much. I think I may have to sneeze again. Cover your ears, Don. Very funny. With the amount of time that it has taken for George to remove his plate armor, bathe it in the green flames of the brazier, and put it back on, you may all take a short rest if you would like. Including me? Even though I would be donning and doffing my armor the entire time? Rules as written, probably not, but I will allow it. We are nearing the end of our adventure, and you all might need every little bit of hit points that you can get. Oh man, Ben being merciful with a short rest. Shit is going to get squad up pretty soon, I'm sure. I only have one hit dice left, so I'll go ahead and roll that. That takes me to 33 hit points out of 35. I use two hit dice, and I'm back to max. I hope these temporary bonuses help us out. I'm good on hit points. I think I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Same. That last fight we did pretty well. I didn't take any damage. I'm goods twos. It was a nice idea to keeps the ranges peoples in the backs. We should do this more as often. Let's make our way back to the barracks that we were held up in. Let's find the black spider and deal with him once and for all. You all begin to make your way out of the forge of spells. The creature guarding it, bidding you farewell, and that it eagerly awaits your return. You begin to make your way out into the smelting chamber where you all battled the horde of undead and the flame skull. A chittering can be heard echoing in the cavern as you all press forward. Does anyone have a light source? Yeah, I actually want to try a trick. 
George, will you let me cast light on your armor? You can be our beacon of light in the darkness. I would be fine with that. With your paladin marching forward with his plate armor lighting up the chamber, you all hear a small chuckle of laughter from a deep, mysterious voice. It says, it's been some time. It's wonderful to actually meet you all, finally. You've been a thorn in my side for some time now, but it seems you've done the hard work for me. I can at least pay you back with a quick and merciful death. Lay down your arms, and I will see that it is painless. It's the Black Spider. <laughs>